<laughs> so first I announced that tomorrow we will not have the extended class because uh, during the regular lecture we will have a visit from Dolby people. Can you be a little bit quieter, please? So, and Dolby people will show you with demonstrations how useful uh, fast Fourier transform is for sound processing. Yeah. So you will see it uh, really in action. And they will also advertise their uh, uh, internship program. And Dolby is an amazing place really to work uh, for a while and get exposed uh, to the latest uh, audio technology. And they uh, um, usually ask me to recommend uh, uh, students for internship, and I usually recommend those that did the best in my algorithm class, right? So an extra incentive for you uh, to keep uh, working hard and do well on the final as well. Okay, and by the way, uh, please tell your uh, buddies that can be that might be interested in the sound processing and bring them uh, to class uh, to hear uh, these uh, Dolby demonstrations. Okay, so no extended class tomorrow. I'll put also a note on the uh, website. I'm sorry, I forgot my laser pointer, so this will be this will do it. Okay, so today we will start a new topic. Uh, later next week we will go back a little bit uh, to dynamic programming and see it in a different setup. Uh, but now we want to uh, do a little bit about uh, uh, network flow. What is a network flow? Uh, network flow is a directed graph with edges that have certain capacities. Uh, how to think about uh, network flow, well, for example, this can be an oil well in Saudi Arabia, and this can be a refinery in China, and uh, uh, the links represent capacities for transporting oil. For example, this might be uh, first by a pipeline to a port, and then uh, using a tanker ship, uh, to another uh, port uh, in China, and then, for example, by uh, system tracks, right, to uh, the final destination. Or you can think about this as a server. Uh, these are routers, and these are, say, fiber optic links. Okay, and uh, uh, these are uh, routers and of course there are ve uh, many different ways how your packet can reach uh, their destination and most likely not all of your packets will go by the same route. Um, so, uh, or you can simply think this as a, a source of water and these are just pipelines and this is uh, the destination. So there are really, this is a very practical problem and there are gazillions of uh, important examples and even examples that on the face of them do not look as max flow problems as we will see for example like bipartite matching uh, and many other problems are reducible to max flow uh, problem. So, uh, as I said, in a network flow, we have uh, the nodes uh, and two particular uh, uh, nodes called the source uh, and the sink. Okay? Uh, things originate only at the source and can be lost at the sink only. There is no leakage in these intermediate uh, nodes. Okay, uh, so whatever comes into another node, uh, the, the flow that comes through these pipes to a node that is neither sink nor source has to be equal to, OK, 
Okay, guys, I promise you that the problems on the finals will be very, very entertaining. <laughs> if you are bored, then keep uh, chit-chatting during the class, okay? So level of final will be uh, measured in decibels. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so no leakages uh, in this intermediary uh, nodes, uh, and the problem is very simple. You have to route whatever commodity is uh, flowing to this uh, uh, network to maximize the total throughput, the uh, total amount that. Uh, uh, leaves uh, the source, which is of course equal to the total amount that arrives at destination, because as we mentioned, there are no leakages along the way. Yeah? Okay, so more formally, this is a directed graph with weighted edges where the weights correspond to capacities. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, the conditions are, on, a, on any flow, is that no flow can exceed the capacity of uh, uh, the edge, right? So the flow can be at most the capacity of the edge and the flow is a positive, non-negative quantity, okay? Then you have skew symmetry, which is just for technical convenience. We say that uh, if you have a flow from vertex U to vertex V, then you have a negative that amount uh, if you look in the other direction from V to U. So we'll see this will be handy in our calculations. Yes? Is there capacity on the nodes? No, no. Uh, so uh, no capacity associated with nodes. Uh, uh, but uh, the only uh, constraint is the flow conservation, namely for any uh, node that is neither source nor uh, destination, sum total of the flow is zero, which means, uh, given uh, this convention, that the sum total of what um, enters uh, the vertex must be equal to the sum total of what leaves uh, the vertex. So now, uh, when we have such a, uh, here is an example of, a, of the same uh, network flow uh, with uh, uh, some flow in it. So this uh, notation means the second number is always the capacity and the first number, which is smaller or equal than capacity always, is the, net, the, the flow uh, through that uh, link, through that edge. So here we have 11 out of 16, here we have 8 out of 13. Uh, this uh, pipe is fully occupied because the flow is 4 out of 4. And uh, the problem at hand is uh, to distribute the flow through these edges so that the total throughput through the network is as large as possible. Right? So if you have, for example, uh, uh, a limited capacity delivery system and this is an oil well, you want to uh, distribute the load so that um, the total uh, throughput from the oil well to the refinery is uh, maximized. Okay, so... Um, what is a, a, an important concept uh, in network flow is the uh, concept of uh, uh, residual network and an augmenting path. What is, um, let me just reduce this slightly, uh, what is uh, a residual network and an augmenting path? You see, um, if you have a flow of 11 out of 16 along this uh, pipe, this means that you have leftover capacity of 5. Okay? However, you get kind of a virtual capacity in the other direction, which is uh, uh, 11, equal to the amount of flow. 
What do you think? Why do we do this? Why there is such a virtual capacity in the other direction? What can we do to achieve? You see, the idea is if you have a flow of 11 to 16, uh, or out of 16, uh, this means that you can reduce this 11 flow to any value between 0 and 11. So by, uh, essentially by reducing the flow through this uh, uh, link, uh, the capacity to reduce the flow is represented by this uh, uh, ch channel, this virtual, the link in the opposite direction with capacity 11, right? Because, for example, here, if I have a um, certain flow uh, of 4 in this direction, if I, uh, you know, just uh, think uh, I can pump back, so to speak, I can, by simply reducing the flow from 4 to say 2, this is exactly as having extra capacity in this direction um, equal to the uh, amount of flow. And this is uh, why we have it here. So simply reducing throughput in one direction is like having capacity in the opposite direction, right? Because you can, net effect would be the same, right? Uh, this, uh, for example, uh, node, if I reduce the amount for to say 2, the net effect is the same as if it would be if I keep it 4 but had uh, 2 coming uh, this way, yeah? right? So for the balance at the vertex V3, that would uh, have exactly the same net effect. Um, and in a sense, a residual network, you will see a little bit later, allows you to kind of, in a formally consistent and mathematically convenient way, uh, kind of change your mind and redirect the flow. We will be trying to maximize the throughput in stages. And this residual network allows you to revise the previous flow in a uh, kind of uh, unified way. So what is now, so for example here, since you have flow of 11 out of 14, it means you have leftover capacity 3 this way, but because you can reduce this flow uh, to any value between 0 to 11, it's like having capacity of 11 in uh, this way. Yeah? So every flow in a network flow has associated a residual network. Um, so um, an augmenting path through a residual network is simply any path along the edges that goes from the sink and terminates uh, um, sorry, that uh, goes from the source and terminates uh, at the sink. And uh, so, for example, here I have capacity 5, here I have capacity 4, and here capacity 5. So how much extra can I transport through this uh, uh, path? 4, exactly. So the bottleneck, it determines the capacity of the augmenting path. Okay, so the idea uh, behind the method how to find the max flow uh, is very simple. Um, let us just see uh, an example, which I believe I have somewhere here. Ah, here it is. Okay, so how does the, uh, um, what would be one uh, reasonable way of finding max flow? Well, this is just the original uh, flow network. You simply choose any augmenting path through this network. So you simply choose any path through this network. So in this case, the path is this one. 
And the capacity of this part is equal to the bottleneck, right? So in this case, uh, let's see, the capacity is 4. So we will pump, we will start pumping along this path uh, commodity to the amount 4. Okay, so here it is. Now we have 4 out of 16. Here, here we have 4 out of 12. Here we have 4 out of 9. Here we had 4 out of 14. And here we have 4 out of 4. Okay. So what will the residual uh, network flow look like? Well, here we have 4 out of 16. So we have extra capacity 12 this way, right? Here on top we have 4 this way, capacity is 12, so we have leftover capacity 8. But in the opposite direction by simply turning off the tap by reducing the flow in this direction, this is equivalent to having capacity in this direction of 4, right? Um, so whenever we didn't have any uh, uh, flow, uh, the, the things don't change at all, right? So here, for example, remaining capacity is 10, in opposite direction is 4, and uh, so forth. So this simply tells you the leftover capacities that can be used to add more flow to the network. Now you choose in any way whatsoever, you choose another augmenting path. So for example, it's here it was this path, right? And you revise the flow. So for example, Let's see, here we had 4 out of 16, right? But, uh, so let's see first of all, what is the bottleneck here? The bottleneck is 7, right? So the bottleneck is, so the extra flow will be added uh, to the quantity uh, 7. So it was 4 before here, now it will be 7 plus 4, 11. Uh, nothing changes here because it's not part of uh, the augmenting path, right? In this direction, we will have 7 out of 10. In this direction, uh, we have 11 out of 10 because we had 4 and plus 4 from this augmenting path, we get 11 uh, and so forth, okay? And you keep doing that for as long as you can. Now, amazing thing is, uh, and this is where we need a little bit of math to prove that this algorithm works, is, uh, as I mentioned here, the way how you choose augmenting paths is absolutely arbitrary. Yet, the claim is uh, that no matter how you add augmenting paths, you will always end up with the same final flow, and this flow will be maximal possible flow. So prima facie, it's not clear why we couldn't keep adding uh, more and more flow uh, by adding uh, through these augmenting paths, let alone maybe, maybe we were just not very smart and we added the flow in such a way that we created a bottleneck somewhere. And maybe by redirecting the flow, we could have done better. Okay, so there is absolutely no apparent reason why adding flow in any possible manner whatsoever will always produce the same total flow. Now, make sure you understand this. I'm not saying that it will produce exactly the same flow it will be just the same quantity of the flow, but the way how you add augmenting paths might uh, produce different distribution of the flow through different pipes. Right? But some total will be always the same and it will always be a uh, maximal uh, possible one. Right? Yes? What do you mean that in this situation? 
Okay, so you, that's a very good question. Uh, what do I mean by uh, doing, uh, doing this for as long as uh, uh, we can? This simply means that eventually in the residual network uh, there will be no path whatsoever starting from the sink and going to the, sorry, starting from the source, finishing at the sink, and respecting the directions. So simply no path from the source to the sink in the residual network flow. Simply in this directed graph there will be no path whatsoever. Uh, well, how would, that's a very good question. How would you detect that there, is, there are no more augmenting paths? What would you do? How do we test whether there is a, a connected path from one point to another point in a graph? That's prerequisite of the course, right? Yes, yes, yes. Depth first search, in fact. So if you run depth first search, it will tell you whether one vertex is reachable by a path from another vertex. So, yes? Uh, which one? Uh, in that one, how did I get? Uh, 10 to 7 out of 10 is the other diagram. Uh, sorry, I'm not. Uh, so, uh, how did I get this 10? Can you enter the next diagram to the right? So, continue going home. Okay, so the capacity here is 10, right? Why, uh, why is the uh, capacity uh, here? Ten. Well, you see, there is a pipe of uh, capacity ten uh, this way, right? And uh, we are using it for the very first time here. But the bottleneck is only seven. So out of this total capacity, through this pipe of ten, we can actually, through this augmenting path, we can only pump seven. So. This is why we will have a flow of 7 out of total capacity 10. Right? So the minimal capacity of an edge in an augmenting path determines how much extra you can pump through this augmenting path. Okay? So uh, now. Yeah, on the first. Yeah, you can. That's exactly right. Uh, here, the, there is no uh, flow going through uh, the network at all. So the, here, the capacity was uh, sorry, the, it was zero out of ten. But then, after the uh, path uh, augmentation here, um, we will, so the first uh, augmenting path didn't go through this edge at all. So the residual capacity was still ten. But then, after adding this uh, uh, flow through this uh, augmenting path, then uh, um, this will be, uh, the, the flow will be seven because that's the bottleneck capacity out of the total capacity then. Okay. So, um, okay, so we have to uh, explain, okay, uh, we have to explain this uh, phenomenon, by the way, this algorithm is called Ford Folkerson uh, Max Flow uh, algorithm. And it was one of the earliest uh, Max Flow algorithms introduced. So, what we now have to, so it is uh, absolutely non trivial why, in fact, um, if you do path augmenting path in any possible way, why you will always end up with the same max, maximal flow, with the same flow, final flow, right? Uh, because as I mentioned on the face of it, uh, maybe uh, simply we try to pump too much this way and maybe some of the um, uh, some of the flow that went this way, we should have rerouted that way and in this way maybe achieve larger uh, final flow. But uh, the thing is, 
that in fact uh, this is not the case no matter in what way you add uh, augmenting parts uh, you will achieve exactly the same uh, final flow okay uh, so to prove that uh, we need a very clever uh, uh, mathematical argument and for this purpose we need to introduce the notion of a cut in a network flow. A cut in a network flow is any partition. Look guys, if it's really fun, you laugh as much as you want outside. This way you are disturbing others and everyone is paying the tuition here and it's absolutely not interested in uh, I, I hope you are sufficiently mature just to behave uh, responsibly to that effect. So, um, what is a cut in a network flow? A cut is simply any partition into two so that the source behave, uh, belongs to one side of the partition and the sink uh, belongs to the other side of the partition. So simply, you color all the vertices in uh, two colors, um, and uh, one of the and the sink is the source and the sink are of different colors, right? Now, capacity of a cut is simply some total of capacities that go across the cut, okay, but counting only capacities that go in the right direction, namely from the source side towards the sink side. So for example, in this, for this cut here, capacity is 12 here. This does not count because it goes in opposite direction. And here the capacity is 14, so you get uh, 14 uh, plus 12, uh, 26. Okay? So this is the capacity of the cut. Another important uh, uh, quantity related to cut, uh, when you have some flow, okay, uh, then uh, we talk about the notion of the net flow across the cut, which is simply the flow uh, from the source side to the sink side, taking into account the flow in the opposite direction, but with the negative sign. You remember we had this Q symmetry in which the flow in the opposite direction of the direction of the pipe is uh, um, counted with uh, uh, as opposite of the flow in the proper direction. So here, uh, the flow would be 12 plus 11 minus 4, right? So because this is really the net flow across the cut, we have 12 plus 11 going this way, and we have 4 going the opposite direction, so the net flow is uh, uh, just uh, 12 minus 4 plus 11. Okay. But remember, again, when we speak about the capacity of the cut, we do not count uh, the capacities of the pipes that go in the opposite direction from the sink towards the source side. Uh, and now, uh, the reason why um, Ford Fulkerson terminates always with the same maximal flow is a little theorem that says uh, that the maximal flow through this network is precisely equal to the capacity of the cut with the smallest capacity. So if we call uh, the, uh, a cut with the smallest possible capacity of all cuts possible in this graph, if we call it minimal cut or mean cut, 
then the theorem says that max flow through the network is precisely equal to the capacity of the <coughs> minimal cut. So Ford Fulkerson will terminate, in fact, when the flow through the uh, network is equal to the capacity of the minimal cut. Now, what's important? Capacity of the minimal cut is totally unrelated to any flow. It's simply the quantity that is equal to the capacity of all pipes that cross the cut. No flow is mentioned whatsoever. So if we show that um, Ford Fulkerson algorithm terminates when the flow reaches the capacity of the minimal cut, then this means that it will uh, terminate with the maximal possible flow. Okay? And we are going to uh, show this in a moment. Uh, just notice uh, that any flow through the network uh, cannot exceed the capacity of any cut whatsoever. Why? Well, simply, any flow has to cross from the left side to the right side. And our assumption is that the flow can never, through a pipe, can never exceed the capacity of that pipe. Right? So this implies that the total flow through a cut cannot exceed uh, the capacity of that cut. So, now let me just, uh, now we have to use uh, old fashioned ways. Uh, here we have uh, uh, 11 over 14, 
So here, this will, in the residual uh, network, uh, we will have the capacity three, and uh, in the opposite direction, we will have a capacity of uh, uh, 11, right? So in this case, uh, right, so here we would have capacity of uh, three, and here capacity of uh, 11, in case uh, that in the original uh, graph, we had uh, um, uh, capacity 14, and uh, uh, we had a flow of 11. So this vertex here would be accessible from the source with an augmenting path that is simply this uh, uh, edge. Okay. And you look, so you will put in one side of the uh, cut, in the sources side of the cut, all the vertices. So maybe, uh, say here, the flow is, uh, um, the flow is uh, uh, 15 out of uh, 15. So in uh, this direction, we have uh, uh, no capacity at all. So we will have only capacity. I guess I use blue in for this. So in opposite direction, we have capacity of uh, 15. But we have in this way, we have capacity 0 because it's 15 out of 15, right? But for example, here, assume that in this direction we have capacity 5, and in this, uh, in the uh, proper, in this direction, say we have capacity 2, and this would be the case if the capacity of this was 7 and the flow was uh, five, right? So here, even though I cannot access this vertex along this edge, I can go from here to here, and then from here to here. So this point is also accessible from the source. Okay. Now, um, so this is. Uh, how we generate the count. Now, my claim is uh, that all pipes uh, that go uh, in this direction must be fully saturated. So here, the flow will be some A over A uh, 